Hello again. Okay, so this time we're looking at calculus instantaneous gradients. So in our previous uh, lesson, we saw how that the gradient is a measure of steepness. That's the one thing we saw. Uh, is a measure of steepness. And we saw that for the average gradient, okay, let me draw my picture again uh, to show the average gradient. So, okay, so let's take a simple parabola. Okay, there's a parabola, and we have someone standing here. Okay, and we have another person standing here. Okay, and we say that the average gradient between these two would be the straight, the, the gradient of the straight line connecting them. So there's a straight line connecting those two points and the average gradient was calculated with the following formula that gradient is equal to this would be x2 that one would be x1 so we said it is and this is f of x okay so we take uh, the change in y over the change in x okay the difference between the y values the y value difference between the y values this is the y value but we find it by putting x2 into the y and this is the x value by putting sorry the other y value by putting x1 into f so that our formula was this x2 minus fx1 divided by x2 minus x1 okay so that is a brief and a very quick summary of what we have done so far now if we wanted to know what is the instantaneous gradient okay for example we want to know what is the instantaneous gradient at that point in other words not average between two points but actually the slant at which this guy is standing okay in other words what is this slope right there so one way of considering it it, it's the slope of a tangent line what is the slope of the tangent line a line that would just touch the curve at that point now the best way for us to actually visualize this is to imagine this guy walking towards this dude standing at this point okay because you can see as he gets closer the gradient of this line will approach the gradient the, the average gradient will approach the instantaneous gradient so as he's walking closer let's say he's now at this point okay he's walked up to here okay, there he's standing now the average gradient between these two is given by this line okay there's the average gradient between them notice how the blue line is getting closer and closer to, to the yellow line okay as he's getting closer and what do we notice about the x value notice that his x the x2 is now this number that's now x2 and x2 is coming closer and closer to x1 that makes sense this guy is moving closer and closer to that guy so let's call him dude 2 is moving closer to dude 1 which means the x coordinate for dude 2 is getting closer to the x coordinate for dude 1. Okay, so now we can just say, well, that, that, that's simple then. So all I need to do to find the instantaneous gradient is say, okay, well, he actually reaches that guy. So now we have, this is our formula, or actually that's our formula, but now x, sorry, that should be 1, x1 and x2 is the same point. The two people are um, at the same place. Now that means that it actually changes to this. And here we see a little problem. We can't do that because now all of a sudden our denominator would equal zero. That's not allowed. Okay, and that is where our uh, previous work limits come in. So the instantaneous gradient at a certain point would be calculated by saying okay let's take so let's call it m instant m instant 
is equal to the limit. What happens? What do we expect to happen when x2 tends towards x1? In this expression, f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by, sorry, that shouldn't be equal, divided by x2 minus x1. We can't go and substitute into this expression because the problem is when if I substitute into this expression, I get zero in the denominator. So I first have to simplify. Now, I can't simplify yet because I, I only have f here. I would, I would need to do an example. So let's take this one as an example. Let's say that my f of x is equal to x squared minus 4. Okay, and I'm also have that I'm working at the point, this is 1. Okay, so I'm, I want to know if someone is at the point where x is equal to 1, what will the gradient at that point be? So let's go and substitute into that. So m instant. Okay, I ask, what is the limit when x2 tends to 1 in the formula fx2 minus f, remember x1 is now the point I'm at, 1, divided by x2 minus 1. Okay, so what do I get? Well, let's substitute into our fx formula. So fx2 is x squared minus 4 minus f of 1 would be 1 squared minus 4 divided by x2 minus 1. Okay, what do I get now? Okay, so this is x squared, so in, uh, x2 squared, sorry. So I get in the numerator x2 squared minus 4, and this negative, that would become a, a, a positive 4, so those two will cancel, and I will have 1 squared, so I will x squared minus 1 over x2 minus 1. x2 squared minus 1, and x2 minus 1. Now, you can see, oh, I forgot my limits, I apologize, please don't forget it. Okay, it, it very often happens. Okay, so don't forget, I am not, I have not substituted yet, so my limit must follow me all the way. Now, I would like to substitute at this point, but I still can't, because if I substitute a 1, I will get 0 in the denominator. So now what I do is I simplify it a little bit further, and you can see I can simplify by making this into x2 minus 1 and x2 plus 1 divided by x2 minus 1. Okay, and here we can see those two cancel, and it leaves me now with this term alone. So now I can substitute in my 1, and I get 2. So once I substitute it in there, I get 2. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, it means that this slope, when x is equal to 1, that slope will be 2. Okay, now, sorry, I'm, I'm writing. It doesn't look like 2 because my sketch is not on scale. Okay, but it literally means that the steepness at that point is equal to 2. Or if I draw a tangent line at that point, that tangent line will have the uh, um, characteristic that every one step forward takes me two steps up. Okay, so the real steepness would actually look like that and not the way I, I it looks in my sketch. But still, think you get the idea. Okay, to find the instantaneous gradient at a point, I need to use my limit formulas. Okay, well my limit, uh, my limits. Yeah, you know, let's just say that. Okay, so instantaneous, instantaneous gradient is given by the following. Now, you can see the whole time I was working with this x2, and that got me all confused, so we rather use this formula, okay? So instead of x2, we'll just use x, and instead of um, x1, we'll just use the number a, 
Okay, so instantaneous gradient is given by the limit when x2, which is now just x, tends to x1, which is just a, in the expression f of x2, which is just x, minus f of x1, which is just a, divided by x2, which is just x, minus x1, which is just a. So this is the common formula that we are going to use. But there is another one I want to briefly show you that is even um, easier to use. Okay, to understand this next formula is really not very difficult, but let me quickly just draw that sketch again, just so that you can uh, see it. So imagine here we have uh, one guy, and there we have another guy. Okay, this is the x-axis. They're standing on a slopey curve. Okay, and this one we called x two which was x and this one was a okay so that was x one now what I'm going to do is just change these two around so it, it really doesn't matter which one is x and which one is is a okay so let me call this one x and then this distance here I'm going to say that's the distance h okay so that this point is x plus h okay does that make sense okay so we can see as this guy is getting closer to that guy the distance between them tends to zero so that this is what happens this is what we ask what happens when h tends to zero and now our formula used to be fx2 which now is f x plus h x plus h that's now that x value minus f of x which is that x value divided by x the distance between these two isn't it that's what delta x means okay is the distance between those two points and that distance we said was h okay so this is another even more common formula for the instantaneous gradient at a certain point and uh, we will primarily be using this one, although sometimes this one is even easier. This is the one we will primarily use, especially in our next video, where we are looking at the derivative. Okay, so, so far, we've done average gradient, instantaneous gradient, and now we're getting to the derivative that is actually um, just an expansion of the instantaneous gradient formula. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, yes, see you around.